The date is July 4th, 2023. And little did we know we would have a week of goodies coming up in the week. The first thing to arrive was NS4000, second of three on NS265 bound for Chicago, Illinois. The 4000 came out of AR, Massachusetts a few days ago with the 6945 and the 7511 and ran a mad dash to make it to Binghamton. This is CP 587 in Afton, the North End of Afton Siding. 4000 is the first ever AC 44 C6M ever built, nicknamed Sonic Bonnet due to its paint scheme. Interestingly about tonight's train was all the piggyback trailers on spine cars. Yes, they're containers sitting on a flatbed truck, but seeing flatbed trucks on flat cars is becoming more and more rare. It used to be common practice back in the 80s, 70s, and early 90s, but intermodal containers shortly took over the piggyback trailer's responsibility. After 265 passed, I hanged about in Afton for a little bit, seeing if anything would come up. No other trains came that night, but there was a lot of gondolas sitting near McDowell and Walker in Afton, mostly marked for Conrail. As day went into night, two days later, another 265 would come south. This one had another gray and blue giant. This one, a CSX C40-8W, marked for MEC. However, it's back in CSX ownership after CSX bought Pan Am Railways out. piggyback trailers on today's train, but there were 40 foot weld cars in the mix, which is odd because every single container on this train is a 53 foot container and always has. A new customer to this train seems to have appeared. INYU is lettered on one of these containers, however it is unpainted. INYU stands for Infinity and Immortal. That's their reporting mark. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these containers and it was a nice surprise. That Friday would see, yet again, another 265. 
This 265 had a speed restriction though. He was only going about 10 to 15 miles per hour right here. He was going so slow that I was able to jump ahead of him two miles to the south between Bainbridge and Afton. For power, he's got an SD60 and an S44 DC and an AC44 C6M, all the commonplace on this train and any train on the DNH. So here's this little chase. If you paid attention to the locomotives, you would have noticed that the 6952 has two American flags flying on the unit. Days before, it was July 4th, so probably crew members had stuck the flags there. Today's train has trash on top, bound for Michigan, double stacks, and the single stacks. The double stacks are out of Mechanicsville, while the singles are out of AR off the Pan Am Railways. This was one of those glad I shot this at where I did moments, as days later there would be a car crash that would take out a lot of the former telephone poles here.
This train right here is no ordinary train. With fancy features like a siren, lights, and grinders. This is the Lauren Rail Grinder, nicknamed the train from hell due to its sparks and all of its lights. The Rail Grinder was working on the DNH, grinding its way from milepost 520 all the way to Binghamton. This is milepost 583. The train was stopped here. I have no idea for sure, but it looks like a crew was checking out the grindstones, making sure they are right to grind the entire way. I took some professional photos and some stupid ones, but this train is always a treat to see. The Laurel Rail Grinder is one of a kind train. Later in the evening, the train, well trains, there's two of them, made its way to Sydney. There's two grinders. The smaller grinder hands out turnouts, switches, and grade crossings, while the big one handles the rest. The two trains have parked here on Sydney Siding, which is used for a storage tray. It was here for two reasons. One, it was going to tie down for the night, and two, to get out of 16R's way. We never got to see 16R that night, but that's the reason why it was sitting here. You see all those lights? That's a good reason why it's called the train from hell. But it's definitely one of the coolest trains on the rails. Well, I guess you can't say coolest, but it's the hottest train on the rails. This train has its own fire department on the back. Those tank cars are equipped with water and foam to de-escalate trackside fires. So of interest with this train is that they've, with the Lorem Rail Grinder, you need to fill up the water tanks so that you don't start fires and and other uh, small brush fires and anything that could flame. So they have the uh, hose from the train running up from the spire hydrant up to the train itself. This is how Lorem keeps up with their water tanks. I didn't know they were allowed to use... Uh, fire hydrants especially in a village so shaking too so it's kind of pumping water right now and you can see it so did not know they could do that even though we didn't get to see the grinder do its job it was cool seeing it sit here along with the sunset the next day would bring what another 265 but this one was a good one the two the WFRX units were still around, both of them being former BNSF locomotives. And this is something Carter has wanted to see for a while, and he got his wish with this 265. As I think his excitement will speak for itself.
There are some goodies on this 265, like that piggyback trailer, and the trash up at the front were sitting in former Burlington Northern well cars, which is always a treat to see of a fallen flag railroad. You did. I mean, former BNSF 8871 and 88870. Yeah, who owns them so, now? See you around the bend. Wait, doesn't Norfolk sell them? No, no, no. You know, do you know who owns the two BNSF engines? Norfolk sells them. Nope. Yeah. Wells Fargo, as in the bank, owns them. They're being, uh, NS is borrowing them because NS is in a power shortage. Yeah. But it looks like you got your wish. You were hoping for them all week. Yeah. And there they are. Maybe they're on, maybe they're making a return on 16R later. Uh, I wouldn't say tomorrow, but good chance, well, today. tomorrow. I wouldn't say to today. I'm pretty sure they already have power ready for that. So Definitely the tomorrow. Yep, see you on the bend. God bless. Take care. Swipe to the next one. Take care. Yes, take care. Next up, later on that day, we were joined by my friend Evan Seymour at Walnut Ave for this 30T. 30T had an AC44C6M leading a Dash 944CW number 9650. It's always good to have fellow rail fans so track no side, as a lot of times we rail fans just do this alone two. way too often One. so yeah. it's always nice to get your friends involved Apple, as they say the more the merrier Three, two, one, go. Oh, don't do it don't oh do and the it. don't do it part there's yeah. trespassers trying to beat the train luckily choice, they thought twice and didn't make an attempt yeah. <laughs> Tonight's 30T only had 51 cars. He's out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada and bound for Binghamton, New York. He carries lumber, grain, Canadian paper products, steel beams, steel coils, and acid like in this last tank car. Me, Carter, and Evans stuck it out for one more train. That was 16R. 16R was coming north, and he had an SD60E and the S44DC, one of the early ones with an enlarged logo, and a Dash 944CW trailing. Ah, this Mr. Mustache himself. He beat the train by near, well, about 20 seconds. But when you're rail fanning, that doesn't, that's not a lot of time at all. 
hurry. <laughs> Yeah, just in the nick of time. The tarp on this center beam was especially crazy. Maybe that tarp was adding downforce to the entire chain. Sixteen hours out of Bay to New York because none of us black could be trash containers and loaded auto racks. Final destination is Air, Massachusetts. Speaking of 16R, another one came north the following night. With an SD60, another former C40-8, owned by CSX, owned by MEC, and then back to CSX and NSES 44 ac for power. Thanks for watching. See you around the bend. God bless. We'll see you all in the next one.